I am going to discuss on the topic biology of the aquarium fishes, special emphasis on common characters and sexual dimorphism of guppy. What is uh, sexual dimorphism? Sexual dimorphism, uh, that is the differences in the appearance between male and females of the same species. And it's a, a difference on color, shape, size, and morphology that are caused by the inheritance of one or the other sexual patterns in the genetic material. Now, uh, sexual characters in the fishes on the basis of that characteristic features, color, shape, size, and the morphology, the fishes are grouped into three categories, monomorphism, sexual dimorphism, and sexual polymorphism. What is uh, monomorphism? Uh, no external characters, to distinguish uh, the sexes, even when they are externally matured, includes most of the pelagic fishes like sardine, shellfish, etc. Now, uh, what is sexual dimorphism? In many species, it is possible to determine the sex from their external body shape and other different features also. And this phenomenon of differences of male and female sexes by external characters, and that is known as sexual dimorphism. It may be permanent dimorphism, it may be temporary dimorphism. In case of the permanent dimorphism, the sexes can be distinguished after the onset of sexual maturity, that's including the color and form, and uh, also size, and that is found in the fighter feces. You see here, there is a female fighter feces, and you see here, there is a male, uh, fighter fish male have the larger fins, where the female have shorter fins. And males are more color in comparison to the female. And what are the temporary dimorphism? Sexes can be distinguished only during the spawning season. Uh, during other times, the sexes cannot be distinguished and that is found in the common carp, such as the Cypinus carpio. And in respect of species which do not exhibit sexual dimorphism, the separation of the sexes mostly rely on internal examination. So observations of STs or ovary. Now, uh, what is sexual polymorphism? Both the sexes can be distinguished by more than one characters that is found uh, in a salmon. And sexual differentiation can be made by observing the gonads only after attaining the maturity. And there are two types of the characters, primary characters and that are associated with the reproductive process in case of the males, testes and ducts, whereas in case of the female, that is a ovary and the ducts and that's observed by the dissecting the specimen. And secondary characters, the fish need not to be sacrificed or killed. And characters occurs in mature fishes, as for example, there's a calic clasper and in some uh, fishes, gonopodium, that's a found in case of the male. However, in certain species of the fin fishes, the variations occurs in the morphology of the fishes. It may be body shape, fins, coloration, uh, different morphological characters such as head characters and size also. Uh, so first one, <coughs> the body shape. Females have a heavier body in comparison uh, to the male. And because of their ovary, you see here, there's a female body is a heavier body. And then genital papilla, it is a small tube in the cloacal aperture and which distinguishes the male from the females. And that's uh, developed in uh, different kind of aquarium feces. And then a pearl organ that is also known as nuptial tubercles. It's a horny short structures that's seen on the snout, cheek region, that's only found in the males and that is found in the common carp and the minnow and the fins. Uh, generally, fins are the larger in the males in comparison to females. In some fishes, the pectoral fins can be used to distinguish between male and the females. In males, they are rough and grainy in nature. Uh, in the Indian major carps, that's the best developed in the breeding season. In uh, some fishes, the caudal fins uh, be used to distinguish uh, in case of the short tail, uh, that is a male fish and the lower lobe is a much longer. And the coloration, most of our male fishes are brightly colored. And they are easily compared 
from the females. Uh, in case of the parrotfish, it is uh, easily observed. In bowfish, uh, the juvenile developed a color circulation spot in their caudal fin of the both sexes, but when they attain maturity, it disappears in females and it becomes prominent in males. And in some cases, accessory sexual characters also develop that includes the modification of the anal fin to an organ that is called the gonopodium. That's a gonopodium. And which helps to transfer of the sperm during maturity. And that's a de developed in the guppy. The pelvic fins are also modified into clasper in males and subsets clasper in many elastobrank species. And female accessory uh, sexual character is seen in the form of the egg laying tube that is ovipositive, that's the best developed in Asiatic lump sucker. In a chimera, chimera, especially the males develop a spiny snout, retract a knob-like structure that's called the frontal clasper. And this sort of structure is also observed in forehead brooders. In salmons, males develop knob-like hook-like structure, that's a lapy, that's a seen at the tip of the both of the jaws. And deep sea male anglerfish, that is a parasites on the body of the female. And fishes, which are parental care, the secondary sexual characters are more pronounced. Sexual dimorphism is less pronounced in case of the fish, which do not exhibit the parental care. Now, what are the common characters and sexual dimorphisms of the guppy? Guppy belongs to order Cyprinodontiformis and the family Poicillid. It's a very uh, small fish, freshwater, and the hardy fish that are the prolific beater and that are the live bearing fish. That is known as melian fish or rainbow fish. They are highly adaptable and thrive in many different environmental and ecological conditions. And while guppies are usually omnivorous, they feed on a variety of the food sources, including benthic algae and aquatic insect life. Guppies are used as a model organism in the field of research, ecology, evolution, behavior studies also. The maximum size of the guppy in case of the females, 27 millimeter, while in case of the male, 21 millimeter. The guppy is an extremely colorful fish and that display elaborate patterns on its tail fin. Males usually with one or three ocelli you see here that are the ocelli and rounded to irregular spot on the caudal base, base of the gonopodium with an irregular dark spots. The body set, back slightly arched. And that's uh, usually have seven to eight dorsal fin base, dorsal fin base number seven to eight. Mouth is small and that is a superior with from teeth, anterior row largest, rows diminishing in size posteriorly. Members of the poisonity are characterized by having pectoral fins placed high on the side of the body. Pelvic fin placed in the anterior positions. Caudal peduncle longer than the head. Dorsal fins zero, dorsal fin raise number seven to eight. Anal spine is also zero, anal fin raise number eight to 10. That is a fin formula. Now, uh, what are the sexual dimorphism of the male and the female guppy. Male guppies are smaller in comparison to female and they have ornamental caudal and dorsal fin. You see here, that is a male fish and you see here that is a female fish. Males are always beautiful. And the females are gray in body color while males have splashes, spots or stripes on a wide variety of the color. Males are about half of the size of the females with colorful tail and caudal fin. Adult males with a modified anal fin, that is known as a gonopodium for internal fertilizations and caudal fin, almost rounded. Males are continuously chasing and mating females. Females can store palms for later fertilizations and may produce young every four weeks. Pregnant females are recognizable by black triangle between anal and pelvic fins. After a gestation period of four to six weeks, females give birth 20 to 40 live young. No parental care is exercised. And the parents may even prey on their young. 
what are the significance of the guppy? Guppy are frequently introduced to both natural and artificial water bodies as a mosquito control. These are the reference books, so ornamental fish keeping, Schwanetal, concept of aquarium fish keeping, Sanjeev Saha, home aquarium and ornamental fish culture, Jarshi Atal, ornamental fish breeding culture and trade, Mahapatra Atal, policy issues on ornamental fisheries development in India, Jain Atal. And the image that were presented uh, in my lecture, I procured from the Google image. Thank you.